Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com with the latest about insurgents at the U.S. Capitol. Washington, D.C. is largely built around three monuments to past presidents, the most famous of which is the Washington Monument. For a few months in 1884, this giant phallic symbol was the tallest building in the world. But the French weren't happy about it, so they built the Eiffel Tower to be a little bit taller. Another famous monument in Washington, D.C. is the Jefferson Memorial. And the third very famous monument is the Lincoln Memorial. President Lincoln was the first Republican president and was very hated by Democrats because he freed the slaves. This famous monument in South Dakota also commemorates those three presidents. The one on the right is Abraham Lincoln. He said, This country belongs to the people who inhabit it. Whenever they shall grow weary of the existing government, they can exercise their constitutional right of amending it or their revolutionary right to dismember it or overthrow it. Wow, that sort of insurrectionist talk is completely unacceptable. Hopefully this man's been banned from Twitter, impeached, and put on a no-fly list. This guy, Abraham Lincoln, clearly needs to be canceled. And the guy to his right, Teddy Roosevelt, has got a few issues of his own. Leftists tell me that Teddy Roosevelt was a racist and a horrible person. He needs to be canceled, too. And what about these two guys? These guys led a revolution against the legal authorities in America. They wrote these shocking words. Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government. That is some serious insurrectionist talk. These two, Washington and Jefferson, clearly need to have their Twitter accounts taken away. And in order to keep our government safe, we need to keep Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln as far away from the U.S. Capitol as possible. Another monument in Washington, D.C. is the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. He said, I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. That was a nice dream which Dr. King had, but his vision has been completely hijacked by left-wing Democrats. White left-wing Democrats want everybody judged by their skin color. That's why Malcolm X said that white liberals are the greatest enemy to the black man and the greatest enemy to America. I saw this display in a store yesterday. Celebrate Black History. Black History Month. That all sounds really wonderful. But if you replace the word black with white in this sign, it would be considered a hate crime. Martin Luther King wanted the world to be colorblind, but left-wing Democrats are completely obsessed with race and they make everything about it. Joe Biden's cabinet is considered to be diverse because it has a lot of different people of different races and colors. But there's little or no diversity of opinion. The four-fifths of counties which didn't vote for Joe Biden do not have any representation at all. Left-wing Democrats have defined diversity based on skin color and sex, which is the exact opposite of what Dr. King wanted. The vast majority of America has no representation in the executive branch. This is the opposite of diversity. Like Robert Fitzgerald Kennedy, Martin Luther King was assassinated during the spring of 1968. Robert Kennedy would have been elected president easily and would have ended the Vietnam War, but that was completely unacceptable to the military-industrial complex. And the day before Martin Luther King was assassinated, he made a very famous speech about civil liberties. Martin Luther King had planned a rally in March for April 8th, but the courts shut it down. This is what he said the day before he was assassinated. We have an injunction and we're going into court tomorrow morning to fight this illegal, unconstitutional injunction. All we say to America is to be true to what you said on paper. If I lived in China or even Russia or any totalitarian country, maybe I could understand some of these illegal injunctions. Maybe I could understand the denial of certain basic First Amendment privileges, because they haven't committed themselves to that over there. But somewhere I read of the freedom of assembly. Somewhere I read of the freedom of speech. Somewhere I read of the freedom of the press. Somewhere I read that the greatness of America is the right to protest. 
So the day before Martin Luther King was assassinated, he was fighting the same battle which conservatives and Trump supporters are fighting right now, the rights of free speech and the right to protest. Clearly this guy Martin Luther King is a subversive, just like Washington, Jefferson, and Lincoln. He needs to be banned from Twitter. Frederick Douglass said to suppress free speech is a double wrong. It violates the rights of the hearer as well as those of the speaker. And George Washington said, if the freedom of speech is taken away, then dumb and silent we may be led to slaughter. All of these radicals were extremely subversive by modern left-wing Democrat standards. Democrats keep telling us that free speech is a threat to our country. Big Tech and Democrats working together have done everything they can to shut down dissent. Democrats say that silencing political opponents is necessary to prevent the rise of fascism even though it's one of the fundamental tenets of fascism itself. But this is a brand new thing for Democrats and the left. I was in Washington, D.C. four years ago for President Trump's inauguration. There were protesters everywhere doing everything they could to shut down the Trump administration even before it started. Madonna was there talking about blowing up the White House, and the press and social media thought it was great. I was there wearing a red Make America Great Again hat, and I was verbally assaulted over and over again. I'm certain I would have been physically assaulted if it wasn't for the large police and military presence. The person I was with took off and wouldn't walk within 50 yards of me because he was certain that I was going to get killed. Two years ago, leftists invaded the Capitol building and shut it down. The press, social media, and Democrats thought it was fantastic. Women's March, October 4th, 2018. We were planning to shut down the Capitol building, but the authorities were so scared of this, they shut it down for us. Now let's fast forward to two weeks ago. The FBI was warning the city of Washington, D.C. that there was likely to be violence at the Capitol protest. The FBI and other federal agencies offered their help to protect the Capitol, but the mayor of Washington and Speaker Pelosi rejected it. They are the two people responsible for capital security. So why did they reject it knowing that the Capitol building was under threat? Let's take a look at what the people who were supposed to be protecting the building were actually doing. Why are you letting this happen? Why haven't you called for backup? Where is your backup? This is our damn Capitol building! And y'all are letting it get destroyed on your watch! Fuck all of you! Call for backup! Get some help down here! And if, and if they don't want to get you fucking backup, they obviously don't give a shit about you! These people want blood! The mayor of Washington, D.C. and Speaker Pelosi rejected help from federal agencies and the people they did have in charge of security stood there and did nothing. That looks pretty suspicious to me. Now let's take a look at what happened inside the Capitol building. Hey! Fucking hey, man. Glad to see you guys. You guys are fucking patriots. Look at this guy. He's got covered in blood. God bless you. Yes. You good, sir? Do you need medical attention? I'm good, thank you. You all right? I got shot in the face. Where are they? I got shot in the face with some kind of plastic bullet. Any chance I could get you guys yeah. to leave the Senate wing? We will. I, I've been making sure they ain't disrespecting the place. Okay, just want to let you guys know this is like the <coughs> sacredest place. I know, I know, hey. Whatever was going on there doesn't really look like a plot by the President of the United States to overthrow his own government. The way this has been portrayed by the press seems to have little to do with reality. I don't know what happened there that day, but it looks a lot more like a coup to overthrow the President of the United States than the other way around. Democrats tell us that it's dangerous to question election results, and that sort of free speech threatens our democracy. But that's exactly what Democrats did for the past four years. Four months into the Trump presidency, Nancy Pelosi tweeted this, Our election was hijacked. There's no question. Congress has a duty to protect our democracy and follow the facts. After saying this, she should have been banned by Twitter and should have impeached herself. There was a three-year-long investigation of Russia collusion, which was not started based on any actual fact. 
But Trump supporters were denied an investigation into hacking of the 2020 election, even though the evidence was overwhelming. The massive anti-Trump propaganda campaign, combined with the obvious rigging of debates via biased moderators, was far more severe than anything that was claimed about the 2016 election. Even deep stater Bob Dole said that the debates were rigged against President Trump by a biased presidential debate commission. There was probably lots of voting fraud as well, but even without that, there's no question that the 2020 election was hijacked. Yet the 70 plus million Americans who voted for President Trump are being denied an investigation. And not only are we being denied an investigation, but we're not even allowed to talk about it on social media without getting shut down. Democrats have been calling for violence and insurrection nonstop for the past four years. By their own standards, they all should have been banned from Twitter, and they all should have been impeached. These insurrectionists in the Capitol are very dangerous. They're a serious threat to all of our civil liberties. And when Democrats do succeed in burning a city down, CNN describes it as a mostly peaceful protest. They say that the actions of a few can't be used as collective punishment for a much larger belief system. But when it comes to conservatives and Trump supporters, their position completely reverses. They believe in collective punishment for all Trump supporters based on the actions of a few bad actors whose motives remain unknown. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, Robert Fitzgerald Kennedy, Martin Luther King Jr., and Malcolm X would all be absolutely horrified by the misbehavior of modern-day white liberals. These so-called liberals are behaving much more like 1930s fascists than the people they pretend to be representing. Toto has been calling these people out for the past 13 years. You can visit him and Kyrie on the web at realclimatescience.com.